Today on Go Nitro. I take to the court to get a lesson in a racket sport with a history rooted in three very different countries. It's one thing to watch the pros, it's another thing to train with them. But there's just one catch. They've had half their lives, we have half an hour. Because every athlete has a first day. Here's the place, here's the legend, here I am, and my new teacher. I was a goalie for 15 years, but we've never done this before. Experience, zilch. Art right there, see that flag? No clue how to start, less clue how to play and neither do you when you start out. Because every athlete has a first day. And you've just been drafted. Badminton is known well around the world by many people as the summer pastime of days gone by. And while most modern families have put away cottage games in favor of tablets and smartphones, it's still possible to find backyard badminton sets for sale at a steal of a deal in the seasonal section of many large box stores. While these toys may be cheap, they will give you a taste of a much more serious sport that is played indoors year-round by athletes across the globe. Badminton, like most Olympic sports, is much harder than it looks. On top of being very fast, the rules are also quite strict. And if you're not careful, you can end up losing a point before the game even gets going. So next time you're tuning in to an Olympic badminton match, remember, it's not all fun and games. Our professor, Coach Lori Rucker. Let's see how we do. Tell me what we're going to do today. Um, so today we're basically going over um, a first-time player having a lesson. So we're going to go over um, how to properly hold a racket. We're going to learn how to, there are two different serves. So we're going to learn those two different serves because if you can't serve, you can't play a game. <laughs> then we're going to go over some of the overhand mechanics of how to uh, hit a proper shot. And then we'll go into playing a game, the rules of the game and playing a game. Perfect. How do you grip? Um, okay, so are you right-handed or left-handed? Right-handed. Okay, perfect. So this is the easiest way to learn how to do this. We're going to hold it in our opposite hand. So if we're right-handed, we're going to hold it in our left hand. Okay. We're going to take our right hand and we're going to take our thumb and our index finger and it goes into the shape of a V. Okay. okay, so I'm going to put my thumb on one side and my fingers on the other side. And then I'm just going to drag it all the way down until I'm holding onto the racket. And it's basically like you're shaking somebody's hand. Okay. Okay. So we just want to move um, over a little bit more. See how there's this flat part here? And my V of my hand is right there. So it's a little, you want to move it a little, okay. yeah, just a little bit. It's a little bit more awkward than a panhandle grip. So okay. a panhandle would be like this. And that's when you see a lot of people playing like that and they're just swinging like this. Oh, okay. Okay. But once we put in the proper grip, when we go to swing, we'll do a little wrist turn and it'll give you a snap. Okay, so are you gonna turn your, how are you turning your wrist? <laughs> um, I'll show you when we do the overhead shots. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so this is how we're gonna hold the grip okay. at all times. So this is a forehand grip. Okay. Um, there is a backhand grip. Okay. For if you're ever hitting on, the, on your backhand side. Mm -hmm. 
what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your thumb okay. and you're gonna place it to the flat part right there. See that flat part? Okay. Flat wide part. So you're gonna put your thumb on top of it like that. Okay. And then that is now your backhand grip. Oh, cool. And you just wanna bend your wrist a little. The serve is probably the most difficult thing to master. Unlike some sports where you can take a practice swing and a couple of attempts, in badminton, it's a one-shot deal, and moving the racket to line up for the serve will also lose you the point. In badminton, you want to try and keep a lighter grip, okay. okay, because we are switching our grip quite often. And also, we hold it typically a little bit lower, but if we're doing anything at the front of the net, we would move it up a little bit higher so we have more control of our racket. Okay. So we do change the grip quite a bit, and so we want to keep it a little bit loose. Okay, perfect. Uh, now tell me about what we're hitting in this because this is really unique. Most racket sports you're hitting a ball, but this one's different. So uh, show me one of these, uh, what do you call it and how does it work? Um, well, the technical name is a shuttlecock. Um, we are going to be using, um, there's two different types of, of shuttles. There's a plastic shuttle and then there's a feather shuttle. Okay. Today we're going to be using the plastic ones. That's usually what we use for beginners. Okay. The feathers typically are used for people who have been playing for a little bit longer or more competitive because they do break so easily. But when you are playing with a feather shuttle, you can hit amazing shots. Like you can hit shots that you wouldn't be able to hit with a plastic because it just, it doesn't fly the same way and it doesn't hit your racket the same way. Okay. Um, so yeah. So technically Technically, they're called shuttles, but we call them birdies. Lots of people call them birdies. <laughs> oh, okay, perfect. Is that because of the feathers? I, I have no idea. I'm guessing. I have no idea. <laughs> All right. Do you have one of the other uh, one of the feathers yeah. that you can show us a comparison? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, she'll get one. Okay. Okay. So, um, oh, wow. there's different brands and stuff like this. Um, this is a shuttle. It comes with 16 feathers and it is of the left wing of a goose. Oh! Only the left. I have no idea. I'm assuming so it flies symmetrical. <laughs> um, <laughs> and this is what would happen if, like when you're not used to using them and you break the feathers, then they don't last. Because then now once this happens, um, it flies poorly. Where's the plastic ones? Right over here. We set them up like this in rows of 10 so that's easier for us when we're doing the lesson. Okay. Um, but basically they are just a plastic, exa exact same form, same cork, same everything, but it's plastic instead so they last longer. Single serves, we want to make sure that they're going as high as possible and as deep as possible. Okay, so when I'm playing against somebody, I don't want it to land middle of the court because then they'll just smash it on me. Okay, okay so I want to try and get it between these two lines in the back. So that's the ideal spot. Okay, so I got it shoulder height. I bring my racket back. What I'm going to do from here is I'm going to drop the shuttle and then I'm going to swim. There and we want it to land oh, between those okay. two lines. Okay, I'll try. Okay. So, and we can stand anywhere up to this line. Okay. Anywhere in this in this square. Okay. Um, the only we can't stand on the line, so our, our feet cannot be touching the line. Oh, okay. Okay. And when we're serving as well, mm -hmm. I'm assuming you want me to go over like. Yeah, yeah, stuff. absolutely, okay. absolutely. So when we're serving, one part of our foot has to be touching the ground at all times. Okay. Okay. So I can lift my toe, and I can lift my heel because my foot is still touching the ground, but I cannot step and serve, and I cannot serve and lift up my back foot. I lift up my toe, I rock to get in a little bit extra, and then I finish there. So that's a little bit higher. Do you mind if I push my Oh yeah, okay, so right about right there. Okay. So I want to be going here. But you don't want to contact it that high, right? You're going to contact it about right here. Oh, okay. That's why we're waiting for it to drop. Okay. Yeah. All right. No power in that. Okay. <laughs> Try that again. But we contacted it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we have to pass. Really good. We have to pass that white line on the other side. Okay. For it to be a good okay. <sighs> oh, I feel like that would have really gone. I I I was feeling it in my bones too. Yeah. <laughs> it was. It was. It was so hard that it made my underpants right up. 
You have no idea the issues women have playing badminton. <laughs> yes! All right. All right, it's in. anybody can play it. You can play it at a recreational level or you can play it up at the highest level that you can possibly play at. So that is great about it. But the thing that people don't notice about badminton is that it's so physically demanding when you get up into those higher levels. So there's a lot of off-court stuff that we do that a lot of people wouldn't think that we, we do. Playing outside is fun and that's great, but um, if you want a little bit more, then there is an entire world that you haven't even seen yet in badminton. One of the biggest things is that I recommend that everybody goes onto YouTube and actually goes to BWF, which is the World Badminton Federation, and just watch some of those games because as soon as you see those games, you realize that this isn't a backyard sport, that you can play it in the backyard with your family. However, it is a highly competitive and physically demanding sport. Okay. So uh, we're gonna go over the footwork. Okay. okay, so we're gonna talk about how we can easily move around the court with the least amount of steps. Okay. okay, so because you're pretty tall like me, you're gonna need less steps than the person that's demonstrating because she'll take three steps as opposed to your two. Okay. Okay, so when we head up to the front, we're gonna do the front V first. Okay, so you're gonna start here. Typically when you're playing a singles game, your home base is a little bit farther back, you're here. Okay, but when we do our footwork, we're doing it just from that one section. We don't do it all the way from the home base. So we're gonna start up at the front and you're gonna do what is called a split step or an anticipatory hop. Okay, so every time that I move to go to somewhere else, I'm gonna do a little hop. Oh, okay. Yeah, so the hop, it's a hop that leads you, gets you ready to go to the next footwork, makes you faster. So we go hop, and then we're gonna go left, right. And we're landing on our racket foot. Okay. Okay, always landing on our racket foot, and then we're gonna push back, and then come back to the middle. Like, oh, I'm supposed to land with this foot, Yeah, right? the opposite feet. So you okay. wanna, your first step after we hop, is left. Oh, okay. Left, right. Okay. I uh, just momentum got me there. <laughs> You're going too fast. <laughs> All right. So hop, left, left right. right. Yeah. There we go. And then I'll do it this way. Okay. So split, hop, left, right. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So the side to side here. This is what we would use for if we're, it's big in doubles, but if we're playing singles specifically, if somebody were to smash down the line or hit down the line in, a, in the middle. So again, we're gonna do a split and then we're gonna shuffle this way. So shuffle and then we end here. Okay, and then come back. This side here, we're splitting stepping out with our left and crossing over because this is our backhand. Okay. And then we come back. wherever the shuttle is okay mm -hmm. so wherever the shuttle is on the court we want to get directly underneath of it so step one you have to get underneath the shuttle the shots that come from there are going to be dependent on how fast you get to the shuttle if you're in the proper position so on and so forth right so footwork is super important and getting under the shuttle the next step is she's going to open up so she's going to turn okay and when she does this she pulls both of her arms up 
So in badminton, as well as other sports, whenever you do something with one side of your body, you have to do it with the other side of your body, right? You have to balance it off. So when she goes like this, she pulls up both hands. Okay, then the shuttle's coming, she's gonna reach up and she's gonna contact the shuttle. There, okay? Then she's gonna follow through and step. When I hit, my midsection is going this way. So I'm using my midsection as well. So I hit it, follow through. This step finishes off the movement, but it also leads me to my next shot. So, okay, so you're gonna start facing forward. Okay. Okay, then you're gonna open up. Okay. With your leg too. Oh, okay. So like this? Yeah, yeah. And then racket's coming behind us. Okay. We swing up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like that. And then follow through. Yeah. Okay. A little bit faster. Not bad. Not bad. So nitpicking. <laughs> you gotta bring this arm up too. Right now you're leaving it down by your oh. side. Okay. Uh, so it's almost as if I was doing a tennis serve, oh. except with an invisible ball. Yeah, that is a good, yeah. So, oh, okay. Yeah, if you need to think of that to bring this up. <laughs> I was never any good at that either, so. <laughs> <laughs> Just warning you. But it's so far not as bad as some of the other things I've tried to do. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, so. You always serve on the side of the points you have, okay? okay. So on this side, it's even numbers. So zero, two, four, six, eight. If I have any of any even number, I'm gonna serve from the right side. So if I'm playing against her and this score is six, seven, um, and it's my serve and I have six, then it doesn't matter that she has seven, it's me and I'm six and I serve diagonal. How I score a point in badminton is um, if I hit it on the other side and it lands in, and they miss it, I get a point. If they swing and miss, I get a point. If they hit it into the net, I get a point. is on the line it's in in, in this one yeah too, so right? anytime it touches that line even if it touched the outside over here yep it would still be good it definitely touched the line <laughs> uh, here you go.
The history of the sport of badminton dates back to the ancient times of Greece, China, and India, where games of similar nature took root. The European variant is based on the sport of Puna, which was brought back to England by British soldiers of the 1860s who learned how to play it while stationed in India. While many sports have taken decades for a women's variant to arise, in badminton, this was not the case. The first female tournament took place the following year, marking 1900 as the beginning of women's badminton. Just shy of a century later, badminton became an Olympic sport at the 1992 Summer Games in Barcelona. Only on Go Nitro. If the show doesn't end here, visit us online for your fix at gonitro.tv. You can follow us on Instagram, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you can tweet us on Twitter. Go Nitro Access is brought to you by Melville, Saskatchewan. It's bigger on the inside. Aviva Canada. Salon services for Go Nitro provided by ID Hair Studio. Hair for who you really are. Don't fit in. Stand out with black chrome.